Let us pray. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ, your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal Mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance, and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been able shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people. A man suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one who, one of those whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we sh uh, we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken as one smite, smitten by God and afflicted. But he is pierced for our offenses, crushed by our sin. Upon him was a chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We have all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord lay upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And whom would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living, 
and smitten for the sin of his people. A grave was assigned to him among the wicked, and the burial place with evildoers. Though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood, but the Lord was pleased to crush him in, in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light of fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was, account and was counted among the wicked, and he shall take away the sins of many, and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Responsorial Psalm. Father, unto you, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. For all my foes, I am an object of reproach, a laughing stock to my neighbors, and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad feel, flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, into your, your hands, hands I commend my spirit. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory.
The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to John Jesus went out to his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where it was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met, met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanyards, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him. Jesus, the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. There was a fulfill what he had just said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had, had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Melchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into your scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that my father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Anus. First, he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciples and acquaintances of the high priest went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid who was gatekeeper said to Peter, You are not one of the man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves of the guards were standing around a, coal, a charcoal fire, and they had made, because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there, keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in a temple area where all the Jews gather. And in secret, I, I, have, I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who, who heard me what I said to them. Then know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him. If I had spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, what do you, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there, keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of one of whose ear Peter cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled, so they could, could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, <laughs> Take him yourself and judge him according to your law. And the Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. 
in order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my, my kingdom is not of here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king? Jesus answered, You say I am a king, for this I was born, and for this I came into the world. To testify to the truth. Everything, everyone who belongs to the truth will hear my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again. Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus in hand and had him scourged, and the soldiers woven a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more Pilate went out and said to them, So Jesus came out wearing a crown of thorns and a purple cloak, and he said to them, Behold, the man. When the chief priest and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. And the Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, we ought to die. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him, so Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you, and I have the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me, if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to, to you have, have the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar's. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Kabitha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon, and he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. They, there they crucified him, and with him two other ones on, their side, on either side. With Jesus in the middle, Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, king of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read the, this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, 
When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top, from top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who will believe. In order that that passage of scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did, standing by the cross of Jesus, where his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, then Mary of Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine and, and sprig of hypus and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, and the Jewish asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down, so that the soldiers came and broke their legs of the first and then of the other, one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier th thrust his lance into his side and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage by, might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for the fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to, to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound, bound it with burial cloth along with the spices according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day. So the tomb was closed by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Today is probably one of the most solemn days in the church, if not the most solemn. It is the day that our salvation was, born, was given back to us, born on the back of Jesus Christ as he was led to Golgotha and hung on a cross. But I'd like to go back to the beginning and, and to where Jesus you know, questions them in the garden and says, who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Christ says, I am. It doesn't look like a powerful statement. It's two familiar words that we use in our language almost every day. But for Jesus to use the phraseology, I am, 
he is elevating himself to the deity of God our Father, because that is one of the names that they used for God alone, and that it was very common use by the Jews, as we can see when the Jews turn their back on this Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. When he repeats, who are you looking for? And they say, Jesus Nazareth. Jesus says, I told you that I am. So it is you, if you are looking for me, let these men go. Jesus, in his passion and compassion for the people who have been with him and for the people who have followed him, reaches out and stretches and shows us the compassion of God for the ones who follow Jesus Christ, for the ones who will become the foundation of our church. Let us pray. Dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her place, peace to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the wor works of your mercy that your church spread throughout the world. May persevere with the steadfast faith in, con in confessing your name. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. For our most holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for this order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect, the, protect our Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit by, by reason for, of their faith. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our Bishop Edward, for all bishops, priests, and deacons in the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed. Hear our humble prayers for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may reserve you faithfully. We ask you this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty, ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with, with new offspring, Increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the numbers of your adopted. <laughs> 
children. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth together, to gather them together and keep them in one church. Almighty, ever-loving God, who gather what is scattered and kept together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by the integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love for his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty and ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Aram, and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty, ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find a way to God himself. Almighty, ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you, the one true God, and Father of all human race. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will, for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty and ever-living God, in whose hands lie every human heart and their, their rights of people, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern their authority over us, that through the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and the freedom of religion may throughout your gift be made secure. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, 
granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty, ever-living God, comfort our mourners' strength of all who toil. May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because of their hands, their hours of need. Your mercy was at hand. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Dearly beloved, for a swift end to the coronavirus pandemic that afflicts our world, that our God and Almighty Father will heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, and help us all to preserve in faith. Almighty and merciful God, source of all life, health and healing, look with compassion on our world. Brought low by disease, pr protect us in the midst of the, of the grave. Challenge the ass and assail us and grant recovery of all. Stricken comfort, stricken. Comfort to their, their family strength for those who care for them and, su and success to those, who, those working to find the necessary medical responses to all of this illness. We ask you this through Christ, our Lord. Behold, behold, the wood of the cross on which was hung our salvation. Behold, behold, the wood of the cross on which was hung our salvation. Behold, behold, the wood of the cross on which was hung our salvation.
please stand. Together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our day, that with the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the joyful hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, glory are yours now and forever. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and spirit and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We say together the spiritual communion prayer of St. Alphonsus. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as with all already there, and unite myself holy in you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Almighty and live of ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the works of your mercy, that by partaking in this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. May abundantly blessing, may abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who are honored by the death of your Son in the hope of the resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increased, and everlasting redemption be made together through Christ our Lord. 